Welcome to another OUinsider.com podcast. I am joined by OUI staff writer Colin Kennedy. Colin, how you doing, man? Uh, always fun to talk sports with you, my man. I'm excited to get into it. Right on. So, some news. Earlier this afternoon, OU picked up a commitment of the Transfer Portal variety. Enlighten us, good sir. Well, uh, they pick up Emoja Gibson. Okay. He is a former North Texas combo guard standout, a Conference USA regular season champion, and someone who, as maybe our members on OUinsider.com might remember, I had alluded to long before this transfer took place that he was a very good fit in Long Kruger's system and on the OU basketball program, and apparently that's exactly what happened when the Sooners met with Mo Gibson, or as they call him down in Benton, Mo Buckets. They basically said, look, man, we're going to let it fly when you're in the system. You can shoot the three ball at a high clip, which I know you're comfortable in doing. And at the same time, your your prowess defensively, specifically creating turnovers, is going to really help us moving forward. And so I think it's a great pickup. I'm really excited about this one because I think, number one, he's a really down-to-earth, quiet kind of leader. He'll, he'll kind of set an example, if you will. I mean, we're talking about a guy that, nearly shot 40% from three, averaged 14.5 points per game, hit 41.2% shots from the field. I mean, the guy just did it all. He led the team with steals and 44. I mean, no matter what you ask of this guy, he's going to do it. He's going to do it at a high level. He, he went to North Texas because his pops went to UNT, got a shot, really made a name for himself. But he played alongside the Conference USA Player of the Year and now I believe he's trying to find a way to cement himself in his own right as a potential NBA draft prospect. So I've been staying in touch with the family, with him. It's been a very intriguing process. I know the whole crew is excited about it, and I think a lot of Sooner fans should be very excited about having Mo Gibson in Norman, Oklahoma. And this comes on the heels of Jamal, Jamal Bienemy announcing he's going to enter the transfer portal. Not necessarily a productive guy on the stat sheet, but played a bunch of minutes for Kruger and handled the ball. Do you think this fixes that process of him leaving? Because I understand, you know, Corbin Merritt, but then Biennemi, you didn't really expect that to go through. I get Harmon's good, but you like to have them both, I would assume. Yeah, you would like to have both those guys on the roster, especially because they have such a strong chemistry off the court, and sometimes it translates onto the floor. But at the same time, I think this really opens the door for Davion to be himself. I think this is going to really allow him to be the true point guard, the facilitator of the offense. And I'm not sure that he necessarily received that in full opportunity last season, and it, it kind of put him in an uncomfortable position. And so, look, I, you won't find a bigger fan of Davion Harmon than me. I, he's an outstanding kid. I love being around the guy. His family is just incredible. The guy deserves everything, and, and there's not enough words in an article or time in a podcast to describe this kid's work ethic and determination. With that being said, it's just hard to truly be so successful like you anticipate unless you're allowed to do what you want to do, and I think Jamal Bienemy was kind of that cloud hanging over Davion, and now it's, it's unfortunate to say, now that Jamal's gone. Now that Davion lost one of his good friends, this may be what opens the door for his future success. And then when you bring in Mo Gibson to replace the enemy, kind of what I said on OU Insider a long time ago when I was writing about why this would make sense, Davion can play the point or play the two. The best thing about Mo Gibson is he played primarily the two, but he's he's been very vocal and behind the scenes that he wants to play a little bit more of the one. And so you take Davion out, then you have an established point guard who can score to replace him. You put Davion in, this guy played the two for a very, very good basketball team a season ago. And oh, by the way, he put up 21 points on OU last season and then. So he knows a thing or two about scoring off the ball. I just think it's a great fit. I, I don't want to say that this is an upgrade from Jamal because we'll see how this all pans out. But at the same time, I mean, it's not too far-fetched to say Jamal didn't necessarily have the best year last year. So. In that regard, I think you're going to get a lot more out of Gibson. I'm excited to see how these two work together in the backcourt. Gives me an opportunity to ask this question. How does Bijan Cortez fit into the program next year? Yeah, that's kind of what's really interesting for me is Bijan Cortez, the 2021 guy, and then Trey Phipps, the 2020 guy that signed the dotted line. 
they both are now kind of taking a back seat, if you will. They'll have a little bit more time to develop. I think mm. this kind of allows Bijan, who's probably the more point guardish of the two, to learn behind Davion Harmon and Mo Gibson. Well, the two are on roster. Let's if we anticipate Davion being there, right? And then at the same time, I think Fifth's Fifth is going to learn a ton from Mo specifically because I think Fifth is going to be a combo guy, and I think Mo is the epitome of what you want in a combo guard when you think about shooting the three point ball at high percentage, being consistent in your offensive shots, being able to facilitate when asked to, and then the big thing for me is Mo knows how to disrupt passing lanes and create turnovers and lead to offense whether it's scoring or passing. And so for that reason, I think when you talk about those two young guards that are potentially making their way to the program here very soon, I think this is another very welcomed addition of Mo Gibson because he's going to allow you to really mentor these guys. He'll help Davion Harmon, who's the projected leader moving forward. It just makes a ton of sense all the way around from a leadership and development perspective. So it feels as if Lon has himself set up for the next couple of years in both guard spots, but that's never been the issue, at least as long as he's been the men's basketball coach at Oklahoma. It's been about a presence inside. And having had some of those guys that can help you, Ramiro Osby, Ryan Spangler among them, Kadeem Latin when he was on, uh, certainly not when he was off, Jamani McNeese later in his career, certainly. I wonder, is, is it always just going to be OU being a low post man? or two, in some cases, away? Or do they have something that, frankly, we just don't know about yet? I think kind of the big battle there, kind of like you're mentioning, Oklahoma's done a really good job of recruiting and developing guards, as you mentioned, but I'm kind of with you there. I think that this thing is really a low-post piece away from being an established program, and and who knows? I mean, I'm very high on Rick Assange of the seven foot one center who took a redshirt season last year. I thought when I went out to practice to watch these guys, Asanza really looked good, but obviously you want to take time to develop your seven foot one center so that they're not completely lost out there with all that athleticism on the floor. And so that being said, you kind of now have to hope that Asanza is the guy moving forward, or maybe Brady Manick and Kirk Quest can form a very formidable duo because Doolittle being gone is a major blow. So you, you kind of looked at it last year. I don't know if we called Doolittle the inside presence that you're speaking about, but he was definitely that form of scoring whenever they needed it, wherever it came from. And now that you don't have that, I think it's very interesting to see how they're going to replace whoever's going to man the middle. I would anticipate they have an answer for that because you don't make some of the moves that they're going to make right now unless you feel pretty comfortable on the down low. But at the same time, I'm still with you. I still feel like there's something to be had when it comes to the five spot for the Sooners rotation. Yeah, Doolittle would make me just as happy as he would have set every time he took a shot from 25 feet out, depending on whether or not it went in. You know, Uh, but no, I I was really you hit it. I was hitting on a power forward type of player, um, perhaps a, a small forward that stretches into a power forward, and I guess. We all wanted Brady Manick to be that, but he is—he's just not. He's—he's a—he's a long shooter, and at, at his best, he's a stretch four. 